and one more theorem that we will prove a theorem involving proof that something is a parallelogram and this theorem says that if a quadrilateral has two opposite sides that are both parallel and equal then it is a parallelogram and it's easier to see on the diagram we're going to take two sides I'm going to show that if this side and this side are both equal and parallel then it must be a parallelogram so you see the given information here AB is equal to DC so let's mark that and AB is parallel to DC so let's mark that and we will show that given that information it must be a parallelogram now the approach here I'll go over the approach before I write out all the steps the approach is instructive I'm gonna start by uh, drawing in this diagonal DB and let's label these angles we'll call this angle 1 and angle 2 now look if this side is parallel to that then angle 1 and angle 2 are alternate interior angles so they must be equal and then I can use that to show that these two triangles formed here are equal by side angle side and if the triangles are equal then this side must equal this so AD is going to end up equaling BC because the corresponding parts of the triangles have to be equal and then once I've shown that that AD is equal to BC then it follows that it must be a parallelogram because the opposite sides are all equal so the earlier proof that I did comes into play earlier we proved that if it has equal opposite sides then it is a parallelogram and I can now use that as a reason without reproducing all of those steps I can simply show that because the opposite sides are equal it must be a parallelogram so let's go through the steps of the proof AB is equal to DC we've already marked our diagram and we know that's true simply because that was given information and the same with AB being parallel to DC that's also given and then I'll draw in segment DB that's drawn and I know I can do that because two points determine a line then that diagonal that I just drew is obviously going to be equal to itself that's the reflexive property anything is equal to itself and again we're not just stating the obvious we're showing that one side of this triangle is equal to DB a side of that triangle okay the next step angle one has to equal angle two okay so so this angle is going to equal this angle and I know that because I'm given that these lines are parallel and if you see those lines being parallel and you see side uh, or segment DB as a transversal then you know angle one has to equal angle two because if the lines are parallel then the alternate interior angles are equal so let's write that down angle one is equal to angle two because alternate interior angles are equal and I'll abbreviate this alternate interior angles are equal they're equal if the lines are parallel and we already know that the lines are parallel so this step right here has to appear in the proof somewhere before that because this step is what logically follows from the fact that they're parallel okay now look at the two triangles I can say that triangle ABD look at this ABD is congruent to triangle CDB by side angle side see side angle side so that's written in there triangle ABD is congruent to angle CDB by the side angle side or SAS then once those triangles are congruent then we know that this side AD must be equal to this side BC because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent and then from there it follows that it's a parallelogram see this side we know that this side is equal to this they're marked that way and we know that because that was given 
and we know that this side is equal to this we know that because we just showed that in step seven because those triangles are congruent those two sides must be equal so now we have opposite sides equal and opposite sides equal so it must be a parallelogram ABCD is a parallelogram because it has equal opposite sides and we're basically invoking the theorem that we proved earlier if a quadrilateral has equal opposite sides then it is a parallelogram and we went through about eight or ten steps to prove that we don't have to reproduce those steps here that theorem has been proven so we can use it as a reason in this proof we know it's a parallelogram because it has equal opposite sides